The addition of the new Pierce tractor drawn aerial TDAs to our fleet. This truck does not have a pre plumbed waterway and will take a different operation to place into service than our other apparatus in our department. It is designed to be performed without the necessity of assigning specific duties. Some of the steps are performed sequentially while others are done simultaneously. The maximum efficiency will be achieved by each member understanding the procedure and the end result desired, performing the next step necessary to complete the procedure. When spotting the TDA, the greatest ability when spotting is with the tractor trailer in line at zero degrees up to 30 degrees. If you spot it at 30 degrees up to 59.9, the tractor trailer position, the aerial ladder capabilities will be limited to the non-jackknife side only. If excess of 60 degrees jackknife, the apparatus is unstable and could tip over causing serious injury. Also consider placement of the waterway hose coming off the turntable and down to the manual gate valve and to the supply engine. This makes working off the side of the apparatus generally preferred for hose placement. Ensure spring brake and front brakes are both applied, then engage the aerial master. The aerial master will not engage if both brakes are not applied. It is recommended to deploy outriggers from their respective sides to ensure they are clear of all obstacles. Pierce recommendations are to raise the tractor axle tires off the ground or take the bulge out of the tires. Continue holding the jack down switch until it automatically stops. Additional weight may then be taken off the rear tractor axle tires by adding additional down input to each jack while also properly leveling the turntable. Ensure all green indicator lights are illuminated. To activate the ladder power, you must secure the fifth wheel lock. To place the nozzle on the ladder, it must be raised from the cradle and offset from the tiller cab. This can be safely achieved by raising the ladder up two to three degrees and then rotating to the left or right until the ladder beam is in line with the opposite corner of the tiller cab. Ensure clearance from obstacles along the trailer while rotating the ladder. This movement of the ladder allows for the nozzle to be easily removed from the ladder pipe mount and then handed to an additional crew member on top of the ladder. It is preferred that two personnel are utilized to mount the nozzle, one on the ladder and one on the trailer, due to the weight and length of the appliance for safety. Connect electric connections from the aerial ladder to the ladder pipe. Attach the three inch hose to the ladder pipe. Spanner tight all nozzle and hose coupling connections. Secure hose to the ladder utilizing hose strap to the hose with a cow hitch two to three feet from the coupling and around a fly section rung with the carabiner resting on top. Personnel will now exit the ladder. Be aware you must use extreme caution when moving the ladder with the nozzle attached. There is no safety mechanism to prevent the attached nozzle from being moved into the tiller cab. Elevate and extend the ladder, deploying the hose. Additional personnel will ensure hose deploys smoothly from the hose storage box while the ladder is being extended and positioned by the aerial operator. It is recommended to extend the ladder to 70 feet this will allow the three inch hose coupling to be placed on the ground and will also optimize stream reach and fire ground effectiveness on most fires. If you extend to 100 feet, you will have to use the 25 foot three inch hose. After the aerial is extended, remove the remaining hose from storage box and place on the pedestal, then rotate into position. Connect a three inch hose to the four inch a two and a half inch waterway gate valve placed on the ground near the pedestal of the TDA. There is an additional 25 foot section of three inch waterway hose that can be utilized as needed. Also consider the routing of your three inch hose to allow for elongation and movement when charged with water. Avoid hose and or coupling binding, damaging the railings, floodlights, and body of the apparatus as the hose is moved or charged. Ensure the four inch supply line has been connected to the closed four inch to two and a half inch waterway gate valve and master stream couplings are all spanner tight. The firefighter calls for water to the closed gate valve. Truck personnel should ensure 
that care has been placed into laying the four inch aerial supply line as flat and straight as it is reasonable to minimize the movement of the gate valve while it is charged. The supply line shall be charged slowly by the supply engine at idle pressure to manage movement of the gate valve. The truck engineer will call for water. The firefighter will open the gate valve and monitor the hose charging up the ladder and near the turntable to reduce the risk of hose damaging the apparatus, engineering personnel, and also to reduce the nozzle ladder reaction. The pump engineer will supply at initial pump pressure 150 PSI. The pump engineer will then factor in the following for hydraulic calculations after confirming the elevation of the ladder with the truck engineer. After the hose is charged, water is flowing from the nozzle. Ensure the lines are free of kinks and resting in safe locations, limiting movement or chance of damage. Then secure the second hose strap to the ladder near the base of the ladder, the bottom five rungs. The Akron automatic fog nozzle does not allow for left and right movements, only stream adjustments, fog to straight stream, and movements up and down. Movements left and right will be made by rotating the ladder. Pump engineer slowly returns the pump pressure to idle. Once at idle, pump engineer closes the discharge to the supply line. The firefighter closes the gate valve while the pump engineer continues to drain their supply line, breaking the four inch side of the waterway hose line at the waterway gate valve. Then slowly open the waterway gate valve to remove remaining water from the aerial waterway hose. Disconnect the three inch hose from the waterway gate valve. Load the three inch hose onto the pedestal, then rotate to load the three inch hose into the hose compartment. Utilize personnel to tend the three inch hose at the turntable as the ladder is retracted. Hose may be taken to the ground to roll and remove air or if well drained, it can be loaded directly into the storage box. When lowering this ladder, when it's within eight degrees of elevation near alignment with the trailer, the ladder will enter the bed assist feature. While holding the ladder down control, the ladder will begin to make left or right adjustments coming to the midline of the trailer in addition to down movements in order to self bed. This feature is not to be overridden. Be aware that it will move the nozzle into the tiller cab if the ladder operator does not stop their movements to prevent bed assist from moving the nozzle into the tiller cab. After the ladder movement is stopped, a crew member may walk out the ladder to the nozzle. The firefighter removes the electrical connection, secures it, and also removes the hose strap. The hose shall be disconnected from the ladder pipe and set aside. The nozzle can then be unlocked and removed it is recommended that a crew member standing on the trailer assist the firefighter on the ladder with the removal of the nozzle by preventing the nozzle from tipping forward when the clamp is unlocked and placed on the rungs of the ladder in control of the firefighter standing on the ladder. The nozzle should no longer be projecting beyond the tip of the ladder. The ladder operator can now resume lowering the aerial ladder with the crew member riding inside the fly section of the ladder. When the ladder reaches two degrees incline, the ladder operator can now again rotate left or right of center until the beam aligns with the opposite corner of the tiller cap.
The firefighter on the ladder can now pass the nozzle back down to the crew member standing on the trailer where it will be secured back onto the trailer nozzle mount. The firefighter walks with the remaining three inch hose into the storage compartment. After the nozzle is secured and with all members off and clear of the ladder, the ladder can be completely stored in its cradle. Remember to disengage the fifth wheel lock to utilize the outriggers. Then communicate with the crew member to remove the pin and make sure the area is clear to stow the outriggers.